we kind of were running late for Judas because it was raining and we tried to go to Pewe and all this other crap. So we ended up getting there right before they opened the doors. But it, it turned out that one of the Gulf guys is a bartender at the Stage 7730. So we're like, hey, what's up? You said I was awesome. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I was really drunk. And I was just like, this girl is so cool. And I was like, oh, okay. But he still thought I was cool sober. So. And we went, and, and I will be totally honest. I was hesitant about going to this show. Like, I, I didn't even want to go at one point. But I have already bought tickets, and Victoria was so excited to see Joey. And Gina and Nikki had already planned to go. So I was like, yeah, all right, let's go. But, I mean, I, I, I figured it was a drama, and I've just never seen Starkid members do dramatic stuff. And I didn't know anything about the play, and all I knew was the premise. And the premise is that it is set in a modern-day courtroom in Purgatory, and it is uh, the trial of Judas Iscariot. For those of you who don't know, uh, Judas Iscariot in the Bible is the I'm man. To say, everyone knows that Judas Iscariot betrayed you. How would you not? You don't know that. All I'm saying is that it's like it's a what do you call it? An alliteration. That anyway, can I just say it on here just because? Okay. For those of you who don't know, <laughs> Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus in the Bible. Uh, and sold him out and got him crucified. For 30 pieces of silver. Thank you. Okay. Because no one's ever heard that expression before. Okay. It's not like a famous expression. Okay. All right. Well, anyway. And we got the, the special tickets, the, like, preferred seating, which we really didn't have to because it was, like, not even half full. But we went and sat on the side, on the left side of the stage, no, right side of the stage. Like, right up front. We were, like, right next to the stage. And I could hear people, like, backstage. So I was, like, saying things about Joey. And Victoria was like, shut up! Shut up! And then I heard somebody sneeze. And I went, bless you! And I heard somebody go, thank you! And I was like, ah. It's not their play. So I feel like that I can say spoilers. But at the same time, you can watch it on YouTube. Because I've seen it. I found a production on YouTube. But it is just so bad that I recommend nobody watch that. Because it is a crime against nature that that is allowed to be. It is so bad. It is so bad. It is so bad. I can't... I'm sorry if you if you guys see this, that it were a part of that, but you, sh you had no business doing that. I'm sorry. If you can't act, you have no business putting on that play. I'm just saying. I'm just going to disclaim that. To say that I'm going to say some spoilers, but not a lot. So, at one point, Dylan Saunders... Oh, so at the very beginning, Dylan Saunders comes out and puts his chair here, and he's the judge. So he's sitting here the entire time, sitting right here, and I'm sitting here. That close. Right up. I'm just like, okay, all right, that's cool. Okay. And then Dan comes out, and Dan's here the entire time. I'm sitting here, Dan's here. Gina's like right here, we're right here. We're like up and close on the action. This play should always be performed, I think, in close quarters like that. You know what I mean? You know, you, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it should always be, it's very intimate and it's very, you need to be, fe you need to feel involved in, in the courtroom. I mean, and we did. I mean, they made eye contact with us. They talked to us at some, with a little bit. Ah, uh, it was so good. It was so good. So good. I can't even put into words how good it was because it was just so good. And halfway through, it was intermission, and I just stood up in intermission. This is only halfway over, and I'm just like, I can't, I can't, I'm questioning life. I don't understand I don't know what's happening to me right now. I'm just having like a revelation, like a personal, spiritual, whole, and it's only intermission and I'm starting to walk out and I'm telling Julia, I'm like, Julia, thank you. I don't even know. It's only halfway over and I'm questioning life. I don't understand. 
thank you so much for doing this. I just, I'm going to, oh, I just want to weep. And she's like, oh, man, just wait for it. Just wait for the end. And I'm like, fuck. And I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's great. Thanks. Oh, my God. And I'm, oh, yeah. And during intermission, Victoria asked. Oh, okay. It's not like it's illegal. I mean. Yeah, it's true. Okay, so right before intermission, uh, Joey comes out as Satan. And Satan's all, oh my yeah, god. That's not why I asked for cigarette. I know, I'm just, just, it'll build up. We came out during intermission, and Victoria was just like, hey, sissy, can I get a cigarette? And I was like, okay. And I'm thinking that she just saw Joey's, Joey's, Joey Richter smoke a cigarette, and now she wants a cigarette. So that's what I thought. But that's apparently, awesome. that's not no, what she was, was saying for it. She was saying because she was so. What? She wanted to calm down. She was just so, right? She was freaking out because it was so good. It was that emotional. Oh, it was that emotional that she needed to calm down. And she's 18, so I was like, okay, whatever. But still, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just clarifying that. She is 18. So I was just like, okay, it was really weird, though. <laughs> she was like, oh, okay, all right, that's better. I was just like, okay. And it started back up, and then it just gets even more intense. I can't convey the emotion that was in that room towards the end. And it's not really something that I can really explain. Well, I guess I can, but it's really not going to have any effect on you. Towards the end of the trial, the, uh, the devil, Satan comes back in and says that God has been stealing souls from him, and he noticed that they were in purgatory working, and then he gets really pissed off, basically. Because why not? He's being stolen. His souls are being stolen. I don't... So he gets so pissed off that he just starts circling the courtroom, and, like, he starts doing... I can't, I can't do it, Tori. Do it. Do it. Do that. What? Do that. The... Wait. No, don't show me. Can you just do it on camera, please? Fine. Just do it really fast. <laughs> All right. Well, he starts doing that while circling. And it's something that anger man people with anger management issues do. So that they can't, so they won't, like, rage out on people. You could tell that the Satan is getting so pissed off that he is about to, like, rip a hole in the courtroom and he is like a, i will reiterate he is right on top of us and he says to dylan that he's going to take his soul since god took two of his souls he's taken his the way that dylan reacted and his name was judge something but the way that the judge reacted to being taken into hell or to be told that you were going to be taken back down taken down to hell he reacted so well the, that the entire rest of the time that he's in the courtroom talking about anything else, all this judge is thinking is, I'm going to hell. That's what's going to happen. As soon as this trial ends, I'm going to hell. And you could see it on his face. That was, that was like the, the one life-changing moment at that point that I was just like, what just happened? What just happened here? And then, like, the lawyer says something smart-alecky to Satan. To Satan. She's like, yeah, when you're done acting like a child, we can continue. Damn! I was so lost in the play that I looked at her and I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And then I'm like, oh, they're acting. But still, for that five seconds, I was just like, I want to get out of here. <laughs> I want to leave because he's going to start throwing things. Yeah. That, that that deserves an Oscar. Good job. And then, then towards the very end, uh, we see Judas, and he Judas has been quiet this whole entire time, and he has been catatonic, and he's just been sitting there. And towards the very end, Jesus comes out. Everybody's been talking about Jesus. Um different points of view, how Jesus feels, what Jesus did for other people, what Jesus did for Judas, how Judas and Jesus reacted together, how they interacted, how they were friends. It's all been 
alluded to. But at this point, Jesus himself finally comes out to go see Judas. And he walks up to Judas and he is just like, I miss you. And they just have, he just starts talking to him and telling him how much he means to him and how much he needs to come out of this. And Judas just jumps up and just starts railing on him and just starts saying, where were you? Where were you when I was going through this? Where have you been? Why do you do this? Why have you been doing this to me? Why have I been like this? Why, 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 why? And they just keep going back and forth. And it was so, I'm getting choked up just thinking about it because it was, it was gut-wrenching to watch. I don't know how it would feel for anybody else to see it. I don't know from a different religious perspective, um, an atheist I don't know. But I know that me personally and Victoria maybe, but the way that we were raised, religion has always been a part of our family. And Christianity has been a staple in us growing up. Like it's just been God is there. There's no denying it. Christianity has been a very large part of our lives. And so to to hear the story about Judas and Jesus and to hear all of these Bible characters my entire life, 25 years of it, and never really getting, like, never really feeling connected like that. Like, I've always known that God is just up there and he's just there for you and, you know, he's there when you need him. But I've never really felt, I've never been able to put it in tangible feelings. But to actually see it be at, in front of me and being played out and being able to see somebody tell Jesus, where were you? Why have you not done this? Why? Something that I have wanted to say at some point in my life more than once, you know? And to be able to say that and for him to be like, I have been here the entire time and you were the one that's holding yourself back. And I just... It, it hit me really hard. So, yeah, at the, and then after that, you know, it, then it gets, I see, I can't even talk anymore because it was just so, after that, he just goes back into his, he can't forgive himself and he goes back into his catastrophic state and Jesus is just like, come back, Judas, come back, please. And then they decide that Ju Judas is guilty. And at the very end, he's guilty, but Jesus is washing his feet. So I don't know. It was an open-ended interpretation, and I don't know really what happened. But I'd like to think that Ju Judas eventually went to heaven. That's what I think. <sighs> it was just so hard for me to, like opened my mind because they just kept talking like they were humans and they were talking about eating and being able to go to and from hell and everything that I have been taught tells me that that's wrong and it's not like that but you have to keep an open mind and just think about it you know it I don't know it was a very thought-provoking play and yeah it changed my life or changed my perspective on a lot of things. It really did. And then at the end, so overwhelmed with the theories and the thinking and the brilliance of it all that I just couldn't form comprehensive thoughts. I really couldn't. And I just kept looking at Victoria, and Victoria is just sobbing at this point. She's just like sobbing tears of, yeah. And we're walking out, and I just saw Julia, and I was just like, Julia. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. And then I just kept repeating, oh my god. And she was like, well, that's what the, that's the reaction I wanted. And I was like, I'm sure it was. I was like, can I hug you? Can I just hug you? And please, thank you for putting this out in the world. I just need to, I need to communicate that to you. And that's how I'm neat. That's how I can. And she was like, yeah. And I hugged her and I was like, just thank you. Okay, I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna leave you alone now. Okay, all right. And I think she knew who we were a little bit, at least, because she was like, well, I'm really glad you guys got to come out and see it. So I don't know why I'm assuming that, but. <laughs> then we 
looked back and I saw Joey was standing out there and I was like, oh, okay. And I really didn't care about Joey. <laughs> He's a good actor and everything, and like he did really great, but I knew that Victoria would want to get him. So I knew she had that covered. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go walk around, talk to other people. Lauren was just sitting there, and I was like, okay, I need to talk to Lauren. So I was like, hey, Lauren, hey, hi. And she was like, oh, hi. And I was like, I didn't want to bother you. You're just kind of sitting here. And she was like, oh, no, don't worry about it. And I was like, thank you for doing this. It was so amazing, and I just kept saying, wow, and it was just a whole bunch of fail, and I was like, I'm, it's so great that you guys got to be able to do this, because you know when you go to a Star Kid show, it's zany and fun, and it's just really nice to see that you guys can do something of substance, and she was like, yeah, I really wanted to be able to do this, and da, 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 and I'm really glad that you came, and I was like, and I don't know why it came out, but I was like, yeah, because we were talking for like a few minutes and I was like, by the way, do you know who I am? And she was like, yeah, please. Okay, I meant do you know who I am because you always compliment my shoes or I'm the girl that brought you the mustache sunglasses. I don't think I've ever told you my name. I'm pretty sure that I've never told her my name. Even though I, ex I kind of asked her and kind of expected her to have like an idea of who my face was, I didn't expect her to know to say, yeah, Felice, right? I don't know at what point that she connected my face with that name, or with my name, but at that point I was like, ah, oh, great, that's, this is, this cannot end well. That's, yeah, that's who I am, yeah, I'm Felice. And she was like, yeah, and I was like, okay, um, can I get a picture? So we got a picture and it was a selfie, and then afterwards I was just like, well, okay, you have a good night, okay, I'm gonna go now, because, yeah. I'm gonna kill myself, no. Yeah, and I kept saying that. Okay, I kept saying that to people. I would just keep walking up to them and I was like, oh my god, it was so good. I want to kill myself now, but... And I don't know why it kept coming out. But it me but I didn't mean it like, I'm going to go home and hang myself like Judas. I meant it was so good and so depressing that I just want to like end it all now because there's like no point. And I realize now saying it to like star kids are not, it's not a good thing because they hear that as like a real thing. Like they have people tell them that they're going to kill themselves and they actually mean it. So I probably shouldn't have said that to them because they probably took it seriously. And yeah, I didn't mean it like that at all. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it. And then I saw Liam. I got to tell Liam how good of a job he did. And he gets a role, and he he ended the play, pretty much. And his role at the end just, like, completely blew my mind. And I got to tell him that. And I was just like, I'm so glad that you got to be on stage and do this, because you were, like, the best part of the play. I mean, not the entire best part, but you were a very big great part of it and yeah you know it's fun to get back out there but I like being behind the scenes he said are you guys star kid fans and I realized at that point that none of them had assumed I guess none of them had assumed that any actual star kids were going to be there or that that wasn't on the main thing on their mind and I was like oh okay we're here we're here as normal people <laughs> we're not here as star kids and I was like yeah we are star kids and then he started explaining how he does the DVDs for Starkid and stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, does he does he not realize that we know who he is? Does he think that he doesn't Does he not Liam, do you not do you not think that people don't know who you are? You've got a phone call. I mean, you're famous in the Starkid fandom. I don't know I don't know why you don't think you are. I knew who you were. I knew you're awesome. I don't, and I didn't tell you that when I saw you, and I don't know if you're going to watch this now, but if you do, I knew who you were, and I love you, so please don't sell yourself short. And I just wanted a picture with Jesus and Judas, or I wanted to see Jesus. Jesus! And he was like, hey, what's up? And I was just like, you were so amazing. This is going to be a theme, by the way. Everybody I talked to, I was just like, you were so awesome. Oh my god. It it wasn't even freaking out that I was meeting Star Kid actors or any actors afterwards. It was just the fact that the work was so good that I needed to convey this to them. 
I wasn't thinking anything else. I wasn't thinking, I need a picture with this guy, this guy, this guy. I need a picture here, here, here. It was telling each actor how great this work was because it needed to be reiterated because it was so scarce of an audience that I felt that they needed to know that it was not lost on people. So I told Jesus, and then I saw Ju Judas standing right there, and I'm like, Judas! Judas and Jesus, you guys were so awesome. Oh my God, please. Please know that you guys are so amazing. Please. I don't know. It just kept coming out. And they were like, oh, thanks. Um, you guys came here. For, you guys are around here? And I'm like, no, we came from Dallas. And he's like, what? I think it was, they really didn't understand how we could come from Texas and come see the show. I think they were really impressed or scared. I don't know. It's like, so she, he was like, oh, you're just coming here to come see the show? And I was like, well, you know, I'm trying to move here. So I was kind of doing neighborhood watches or neighborhood checking out and he was like oh well i'm not from here either so i can't help you at all and i was like okay you guys are so amazing please keep doing things please just keep going out and doing things i will go to them i will go to your shows i don't care and he was like well they're not really going to be here they're going to be in new york and i was like i don't care i'm from dallas i will follow you anywhere which was probably really creepy and they were like, okay. And I was like, Gina lives in New York. Should I go stay with Gina? And G they were like, oh, wait. And Gina was like, oh, yeah, hi. I live in New York. And I was like, yeah, she lives in New York. And then they started talking about how they were New York buddies. And it was, yeah. Truly, I got a picture with Jesus and Judas. Jesus and Judas and me in the middle. I loved it because I was like, there is a joke here somewhere. I love it. It's like Jesus, Judas, and police walk into a bar. All right, so... Then there's a crowd of people, or there's like a circle, and Joey. And in the circle are Gina, Nikki, and Victoria. So I walk over there, and I'm just seeing them kind of talking, and I didn't realize that he was still talking to this other group of girls, and we were just, they were just kind of waiting. I thought they were all talking together. And then Joey was like, oh, okay, well, did you guys want a picture or something? And I was like, oh, yeah, can we get a picture? And he was like, actually, I'm doing these girls first. And I was like, oh, right, okay, sorry. <laughs> I did them, and then they walked off, and then I was like, Joey, wow, good job. You're amazing. And then I was like, but you, you and I, I have a bone to pick with you. You made my sister start, start to smoke. And then she was like, he was like, what? He was all freaked out, and he was just like, What? what your sister started smoking because of me and victoria is just sitting there going shut the fuck up i will kill you i will murder you she's just so mad and i was kidding okay i was just saying that she saw joey smoking on stage and then she wanted a cigarette no, that's not what happened. but that was not the correlation that was the correlation in my mind but apparently that was not what happened Oh, yeah, well, I mean, it was just so, I'm just kidding, but it was so good. Oh, my God, it was so good that I want to kill myself. And then he went, don't do that. And then at that point, I thought, I really shouldn't have said that to Joey Richter, because how many times a day do you think he gets told, I want to kill myself because you're so beautiful? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I didn't really mean that either. I don't know why. I'm just saying offensive things that are just spilling out. You were really good, by the way. Hey, we have met you so many times, but she needs a picture. Like, please just take a picture with her. Please, just do it. And she was like, okay. He was like, all right, come here. And then they took a picture. And then I was like, oh, yay, Victoria got a picture with Joey Victor. And then she got a picture with me and everybody. We started talking to some other people, and we started thinking about leaving. Then Victoria says that her picture was blurry. Okay, do you know how many times that I have heard from Victoria that she has not met Joey Richter, even though she has met him three separate times. But no, she is not. I've only met him twice. The part that you're thinking about, I didn't really meet him. I didn't okay. Really meet him. Anyway, how many times have I heard that she has not gotten a picture with Joey Richter, and that I have gotten several pictures with Jeff Lynn? How many times have I heard that? How many times have I had to deal with? We are going to meet Joey Richter after the show. Oh my God, this is going to be amazing. I'm going to finally get a picture with Joey Richter, and now it is blurry. No. No, 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 that's not happening. I'm not leaving here without Victoria getting a good picture. No, no, sissy, it's okay. He's starting to leave. He's trying to leave. Please don't talk to him. It's okay. It's all right. And I was like, no, we're getting a good picture, okay? And I'm just accosting every single star kid, by the way. I'm just like, hey, I'm obnoxious. Please talk to me. And 
Yeah, I really apologize, but I was like, hey, Joey, I know that I've already embarrassed the crap out of you, and I know that I have accosted you and harassed you for pictures, but her picture is blurry, and I'm not going to hear the end of it if I don't get a good picture with you and her, so please, could you please just take a real fast picture with her again? Thanks. Come here, and he, like, grabbed Victoria again, and they took a picture, and this time... It came out good. Like, oh, can we get a picture with Joe Walker? And I was like, really? Really? Do we have to get a picture with Joe Walker? Really? I don't know why. I don't know why I have this disdain for Joe Walker. I really don't. I mean, he's an okay actor. I'm just like, do we really have to wait around for him? I don't understand. Of course, I'm the obnoxious one. So I'm like, hey, Joe, can you come out here and say hi to us? Because apparently they want a picture with you. I don't. I mean... I'll get in the picture because you're kind of cool. Okay, all right, I'm going to stop talking now. And he was like, short people in front. And I was like, no, okay, jerk. And uh, I was like, okay, ass. And I like jumped in at the last second and I kind of like hit my head against his pecs. And I was like, oh, okay, that's awkward. And then I was like, all right, well, let's go. Let's walk out. Let's just go home. And I kind of asked the door guys, I was like, hey, could you guys help us get a cab? Because we're girls and we don't, girls. sure, we're young girls in the city. I don't know. Anyway, the guy said he would. The guy walks over to this cab that is sitting right there. Okay, he walked over there. He opened the door. Joe Walker was on a bike talking to this guy who had his hand on the door of the cab, I guess, or standing near the cab. Well, apparently, this cab was already reserved for this guy. And this guy turns around and was like, no, that is my cab. And I was like, sorry. Well, I just almost stole this guy's cab. Karma has reiterated. Karma has gone back around. AJ, I know how you feel now. My bad. I know. Honest mistake, right? And then Joe Walker got us a cab, or he tried to. He was like, hey, I'll, d I'll just do it. I got the whistle down. But then some other guy had already got a cab. But we almost got a cab by Joe, Joe Walker. He tried. That counts, right? Yeah. Maybe. No? Okay. And that was, that was it for Judas.